Who's gonna grab? Oh, did you grab her? Get her, get her, get her! Almost, almost. Uh, no flap your wings. Stop flapping your wings. Hold her wings down. Just hold her wings down. Okay. All right, you got her. Hold her, hold her wings down. Grab her from the top. There you go. 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 Here, hold that. Got it. You gotta grab her from the top. No, I want her. Can I hold her, please? We gotta get chicken poop out of the house. Why are you on my front step? So much chicken poop. All right, let's sweep up this front step. And then we got projects to do outside. Say you live on a hobby farm without saying you live on a hobby farm. There's a chicken in your house! All right. Can you tell it's no longer 20 degrees outside? <laughs> Callie's in a summer dress. It's okay. Uh-huh, 50 degrees feels like summer, huh? Isn't that funny? It is funny. All right, good morning, everybody. I guess we're just making some progress on these videos of showing our slow and steady progress. Isn't it great watching a video where the one thing, the one garden bed takes about like 10 minutes? Well, reality is it takes multiple days. So this is day three of working on it. Yesterday we took a break. We went on a date yesterday for the first time in I don't know how long, which is embarrassing to say. We should be going on a date every week, a couple times a month at the minimum. So we're gonna try to make it a bigger priority. So and the most challenge. exciting part is that when mom and dad go on a date every week, we get to stay in and Papa's house and exciting. <laughs> that is very exciting. So we are thankful that Mimi and Papa did move here to Tennessee. So now we do have babysitters to allow us to actually go out on a date night. So encouragement, anybody else joining with us and going to try to make it a priority to go on a date at least once or twice a month. If that has to be a home date, so be it. We were sitting out to eat and all of a sudden we were like, whoa, like we haven't sat and just like talked just one-on-one -on -one in too long. Other than like, of course at home and figuring things out, but like Rock, talking paper, and reminiscing paper, and Rock. dating. Anyways, Rock so, but my date today Rock. is Philip satisfying my raised garden bed dream of having herbs out here. I'm literally sitting in this window up here after I sit in my chair for my quiet time. I can look out the window, out to the property, and I'm just staring and I'm thinking here we will put in like a barrier and then, then we can fill it with rock and then have a nice crisp sharp line and then out here will be grass. Based on the light of this time of year, this is actually the perfect time for me to visualize it. I am walking into the tree shade right now as I walk further away from the house and looking at where the best light is for a greenhouse. And we were able to collect a whole bunch of glass windows for free last year. Someone was getting rid of like 25 windows on Facebook Marketplace. They have just been sitting in the barn, our massive barn over there, which we also need some ideas of how we are going to be utilizing that to the max of its ability. But, the window greenhouse is kind of a aesthetics. I just think it's beautiful having a window greenhouse. I just think they're very pleasing to look at. And I'm trying to decide how to make this back yard area from the fire pit to the house kind of feel like a courtyard. I actually like the RV right here where it kind of felt like this like uh, courtyard kind of feel. But right here for window greenhouse, but I was also thinking right here on this mound, doing like a miniature window greenhouse, just utilizing the hill as the back half wall and then coming up and over. But we can't have too many things here and even down here where I was saying we could do the window greenhouse. We can't have too much because we wanna be able to back the RV down the driveway and possibly park it under that overhang. Now the question is, is Philip a good enough driver 
to actually fit in that overhang. That's yay wide. And that's yay <laughs> wide. We would have to measure and see how tight and perfect. And this shed is here, so backing, I don't know. I don't know if that's reality, but we're trying to figure out where, where do we park the RV when we're not using it. Cassidy, oh, where are your shoes, baby? No shoes. All right. Okay, a few days into this project and we are on the last step, which, which is just to fill up the beds with soil and I'm very excited but at the same time I'm like that took that many days and we are just on the first side and the second side is going to have two tiers which does that mean it's going to take twice as long I hope not <laughs> Look at how cool that is. That is just a garlic clove that got thrown out into the compost. And all of these want to grow. So I can literally separate this, go put this in the garden. This is the green part that would be sticking up above the ground. And this would be an entire head of garlic. How many of those do I have? A dozen heads of garlic right here. That's awesome. chicken coop does not smell. Great. Most chicken coops I've been in smell awful. Only 20 more scoops and you'll be ready. <laughs> Your turn. Okay, so we are moving the compost from the side yard to the backyard, right in the bottom corner of the garden. And we're gonna try to make an actual active compost pile. So we've done a very passive compost in the past where we just take all of our scraps that we don't feed the chickens, which is very few things. So it's been kind of a smaller operation and it's just passive. We just put it into a pile and just leave it there. But if you actively do a compost and have like a good amount of ratios of nitrogen to carbon and actually turn it and give it some moisture, we could have a really nice big compost pile that we make ourselves within just a month. And it would be really nice to have really rich compost that is free other than the labor. <laughs> Our chicken coop never smells, which I think is a very big rarity when it comes to chickens. I feel like most people walk into a chicken yard and think how it stinks so bad that they wouldn't want chickens. And honestly, probably from my past experience, I would have said the same thing. If we didn't really want chickens and we didn't really love eggs and wanted to use our chickens for kind of a some composting and for them to eat chicken scraps and all that kind of good stuff. I don't know if I would have been super drawn to have chickens either, but what we do something is called, actually we did it before we even knew that there was a name to it. It's called deep bedding, I believe. And you just provide a deep amount of bedding for your animals. So same thing would go for a 
cow that was in a barn for the winter and you just add a lot of bedding and you add enough bedding to balance out the ratio for their manure and their urine and for our chickens, for our chicken poop. And we put in grass clippings and wood chips and it doesn't smell in there because it's composted. And it was kind of a theory that we had and we went for it by not cleaning out our chicken coop is literally what we did. We just didn't clean it out and added wood shavings on top of the manure, which you do for little baby chicks. Well, we did the same thing for our big chickens and it turned out to be amazing. It turned out to be compost. I go in there and Philip is literally scooping out chicken poop. We're scratching up the surface. We are getting our whole body into the chicken coop. And in here, <sighs> it doesn't smell like at all. And that is pretty, pretty darn awesome. We do need to clean out the window sills. That's the only part that I think is a little bit gross. Um, but we are going to be scraping this out, using it for the compost, and then putting in some new deep bedding. It might smell a little bit until that deep bedding starts to compost. But for any of you who are looking for a way for your chicken yard to not, spell, to not smell, I would really look into a deep bedding method. And that's literally can you see how deep our bedding is compared to where the chicken is standing like you can see the holes that Phillip's already digging out and you can see up the back it's like a good solid six inches probably and I think they say like 12 inches 24 inches would be even more awesome